Welcome to your tutorials for this week's routine. Today we are going to be focusing on the leg series because I've incorporated this brand new exercise. So there's lots of feedback and lots of questions coming in on it. I think I know exactly what you need in order to make this one pack a lot of punch and really feel it back there in like the glute, hamstring, maybe even a little bit of inner thigh. So let's start to run through that form right now. The first thing we need to talk about is heel placement. Usually people try to place their heels a little too close to their butt. And if you do the move like this with your heel this close to your butt, you will primarily end up feeling it in the top of the thigh, the quadricep, and maybe even in the kneecap. Not a very comfortable position. So when you're here, I do want you to give yourself permission to play with where the foot placement is and definitely step it forward. This is going to make sure that you hit all of the right spots. So again, there is space back here behind the knee. Don't be afraid to step that foot away from you or forward a little bit to ensure you have proper setup. The next thing we need to talk about is how high you lift the hips. Now here's the deal. The hips do lift off the floor, but it's so, so small that I wouldn't even call it a lift. In fact, I would call it a hover. And what happens is from an outside perspective, you really can't even tell that the hips are off the ground, which is what you all are experiencing when you're watching the video this week. Like I got the video back and I was like, oh my God, you can hardly even tell that my hips are off the ground, but in fact they are, it's just that tiny. So you get your heels placed in the correct spot. Then you move your working leg more to the center. You lift the opposite knee off of the floor, and now you're gonna think about scooping. So push your working leg down, and then just barely scoop the tailbone off the floor. Right now, I am actually lifted off the floor. I could just slide my hand underneath. I can feel the waistband or the spandex of these shorts here kind of brushing or hovering against the floor. Get to this spot, dig your heel down, focus on that tiny little lift, and before you do anything else, make sure that you can feel this leg working. So just in the time that I've been talking here, I'm already feeling the underside of the glute and the hamstring. I wanna give you all a close-up of this so that way you can see exactly what's happening. So I'm gonna move my arms so that way you can see a little bit better. This is how high you lift. Right there, that's it, okay? If you're coming all the way up to here, you're definitely in the wrong spot because now it's just my shoulders on the ground and my ribs are lifted. I wanna keep the ribs anchored down while only scooping, not scooping, while only scooping the tailbone off of the floor. So my lower abs are scooping inward. This is where that pelvic floor comes in. And then you can see here, just my hand can barely slide underneath. The goal of this exercise does not actually have to do with this leg that's moving, okay? The leg that's moving is there to entertain you and to challenge you, all right? But the main goal of this exercise is to keep the hips as light on the floor as possible, to keep the working heel active and grounded while the body does other stuff, okay? So let me keep going here. At the very beginning, you're gonna find that teeny tiny little scoop off the floor. I am lifted right now, all right? Then this toe taps down, my hips are still scooped off the floor. Now, this leg extends out, and when the leg extends out, that's when the hips will lower a little bit, but they don't lower so much that you sink, right? See how I just sunk there? No, I'm still keeping the rib anchored. That's super important. Ribs stay anchored down. I'm still keeping pressure in this working leg, and I am light on the floor. So I say this in one of the videos at some point, 
But if you are on memory foam, you're trying to make it as much as possible so that your butt doesn't end up leaving an imprint in the memory foam. So again, okay, knee comes up, hips have a scoop. Toe taps down, hips stay the exactly the same. Leg extends out, hips are lightly on the floor. Head lifts up, same thing. Hips are still light on the floor. They're touching, but they're light. Leg lifts up, same thing, light hips. That's gonna be the hardest part to keep this leg engaged. It lowers down, still light on the hips. Head comes down, guess what? Still light in the hips. Now, when the toe comes in, you're gonna be able, oh my God, my leg. You're gonna be able to lift to get a little bit more of that scoop up. And then of course, when the knee comes in. So throughout the move, hips stay light, but when the leg goes into extension, they will lower just a little bit. Quiz time. How do the hips stay light on the floor? They stay light because the working leg is anchoring down. So this is a principle of opposition. Because I put weight down into the working leg, that causes the hips to scoop up. So the only way that you can possibly keep your butt light on the floor as you do this exercise is to keep your working leg anchored and grounded. Some people mention that they felt a lot in the, in the leg that's moving around, which I get. You may be trying to focus a little bit too much on doing all of this stuff. So I want to give two points here. Number one, if you're not feeling the backside of the leg, you shouldn't do any of the rest of the exercise. You should just scoop up as much as you can and hold. If you can't really get your tailbone even a little off the floor, then use this toe very lightly just to help you here, okay? So this would be the first thing to get. Sensation while holding the hips slightly hovered in a single leg bridge. If you get sensation here, that's when you can start to do other movement. But I just wanna make sure that we all understand when the leg is going for the kick up part, you don't have to lift to a straight leg. If this bothers your hip flexor, there is absolutely zero need for this leg to be straight. So what you can do is you can just bend the knee to come in, that will help the hip flexor, or you can just skip that leg part altogether and simply hold. Okay, I think that that covers most of it. The only other thing that I wanna tell you is about the inner thigh. So in an ideal world, ideal, uh, the inner thigh does feel something in this one. However, the inner thigh is what I would call a stabilizer. So it's a bit secondary in this exercise. Primary is going to be the glute, the hamstring, and then the low belly because you're scooping off the floor. I think the more that you practice getting those pointers all there, the more that you really dig that heel down, then the more uh, the inner thigh will kind of start to activate. But if it doesn't happen right at the beginning, I don't want you to stress about that. I don't even want you to think about it. It's one of those things that come with time as the entire move gets more well-rounded.